What is going on? If you came here to learn about Zilliqa, the first high throughput public blockchain, and stick around, we're going to bring you a Zilliqa review 2019. We're going to quickly look at Zilliqa in a nutshell, but then going to look at the very exciting news of the Zilliqa mainnet that happened just today. We're going to look at a few of its specs, and then of course at its implementation of sharding, the first blockchain to implement sharding. With that out the way, I'm Maximilian. Welcome to BitAssist. If this is your first time here and you're looking for cryptocurrency news, cryptocurrency reviews, then make sure to stick around and subscribe to our channel right now. Fantastic. With that out the way, let's jump straight into Zilliqa and a holistic overview. Just to let you know, we're going to do a quick overview of Zilliqa's website in one to two minutes. We're then going to jump into a fantastic presentation that Zilliqa put together to give you a holistic overview of what Zilliqa is. Keep in mind, if you know what Zilliqa is and how it operates already, and you'd like to skip through to the more relevant parts, maybe about the mainnet or sharding, then in the description below and the comments, I'll put timestamps to all the relevant parts of this uh, review. Like I said, we'll then move on to um, sharding and basically how um, Zilliqa plan to implement this. Um, and then lastly, we're going to take a look at the few of the features that the new mainnet of Zilliqa is going to implement. Let's get started with what is Zilliqa. Zilliqa is a scalable, secure, and public blockchain platform that will be used by developers to build real-world use cases and applications that can scale to real-world demand. They'll be the first public blockchain to implement sharding, and of course, we'll be able to see transactions up to 2,828 transactions per second. This is, has already been achieved now on their testnet. So from that, we of course can take that Zilliqa takes scalability incredibly seriously, but do they then have to sacrifice on other things, let's say like security. Now, scalability is Zilliqa's first priority. Zilliqa is designed so that the throughput scales almost linearly as the number of nodes scales, ensuring that Zilliqa's capacity can continue to grow to meet demand. As you'll see here in this diagram, what it means basically is that the more nodes that come onto the network, the faster or more scalable the network becomes. So let's say for example, there's 1,800 nodes in the network, could roughly do 1,200 transactions per second. But if there's 3,600 nodes on the network, could do upwards of 2,400 or 2,500 transactions per second. This is much like uh, or not like any other protocol that we see at the moment. Let's say Bitcoin or Ethereum as an example, the more nodes that are on the network and the more data that is on the blockchain, actually the slower and the more expensive that network does become. So the scalability of Zilliqa is the total opposite and will help for real world applications to scale and of course to, to reach real world demand. Now, as I've said, does this scalability have to sacrifice security? Well, no, not in uh, Zilliqa's case. Zilliqa's smart contract language is known as Skiller. Uh, it's, it's safe by design and addresses several known security vulnerabilities in the existing languages we see today. As a functional programming language that allows for static checks and formal verifications, developers will also be able to easily conduct thorough checks to ensure that their smart contracts behave as the way, you know, the way they should before they are implemented onto the main net. So that's a great um, functionality is that you can build the best you know application but if your smart contract is not secure you know you've just wasted a lot of time and potentially you're gonna you know waste a lot of money if you were to be hacked now um, uh, Zilliqa allows you to check your smart contracts prior to putting them on your main net when it comes to uh, the protocol of Zilliqa they do use it um, for mining, of course, to to um, secure the network. Now, Zilliqa has a dual um, consensus algorithm or dual mining algorithm uh, using proof of work and practical Byzantine fault tolerance. They use a small amount of it for proof of work. Um, and then the majority of the consensus algorithm is done by practical Byzantine fault tolerance. So this means that Zilliqa's version of mining has a far lower energy footprint than the legacy proof of work blockchains. Furthermore, Zilliqa's miner rewards are based on each miner's contributions of valid signatures, resulting in more evenly distributed rewards. 
compared to the existing rewards we see today where like you need to mine a whole block to get a reward much like bitcoin so with that in mind how is Zillica going to scale to go to real world use cases now the scalability issue uh, right now we see bitcoin scale to roughly seven transactions a second ethereum to roughly 10 transactions a second and then we have visa the holy grail of up to 8000 transactions per second now this is what zillica is trying to achieve it's real world use cases and real world demand now to get there obviously you know you have to use some serious technology and what they plan on using is sharding now what is sharding we're going to jump quickly into uh, uh, an article here from decrypt that gives you a great holistic overview of what sharding is the sharding is a way to horizontally split up databases into more efficient smaller sections instead of having all the nodes on the zillica network process and store every transaction like bitcoin does it splinters the network into groups of 600 nodes each group is responsible for a portion of the total transactions so more of them can be processed at one time without overloading the system that's designed to in increase the scalability without compromising on security. There's a good um, image here that kind of shows that. Um, so what they'll say is that it's all divided into shards. Those shards are then put through into groups and then the group are combined to then reach a consensus. So this allows for a, a huge amount of data to be grouped um, and it allows for you know a hell of a lot more data to be processed therefore a lot more scalability to reach transactions of up to let's say 8000 that visa do today to continue here on decrypt it says here generally speaking the result of sharding is that the network is split into the number of shards for it to achieve the hoped um, for it to achieve the hope for 2500 transactions per second which closes in on visas 4000 it has to have six shards so keep that in mind um, the more shards um, uh, the quicker it can become so as we said earlier on you know is there going to have to be a sacrifice on security if we're going to be using sharding and be able to scale to these numbers so zillica says it has a workaround that protects the speediness of sharding without sacrificing its security one key element is having a minimum of 600 nodes per shard that means a malicious actor would need to control at least 400 of those 600 nodes and that would be possible if an attacker was able to direct his attack at a specific shard zillica's technology however reportedly makes that impossible a random mechanism divides nodes between the shards now that obviously helps us to understand that if let's say an attacker were to get upwards of 400 um, of these groups or nodes then um, zillica has a mechanism built into it where it divides these nodes so only those 400 would be able to be compromised not the rest of the zillica protocol let's then um, uh, close out this and move on to uh, the just recent mainnet launch of zillica uh, and how they plan on bootstrapping this and getting this ready for um, the mainnet and for of course everyone to use the zillica protocol so there's going to be a bootstrap which will kickstart a one month phase where usability will be limited during this period no transactions will be made on the network um, while the miners will receive mining rewards they will be unable to spend them until the period is over this is to ensure the network can withstand attacks in a real world environment and to allow the hash rate or the computing power that protects the network to rise and to keep it safe okay and uh, let's now look at then um basically the features that will be implemented into the mainnet we have discussed a little bit of them already uh, but let's just quickly take you through this article written by someone in the team that has helped design um this mainnet of zillica so firstly sharding now as we've discussed uh, uh, in our overview so far sharding will allow for transactions to scale to uh, you know real world use cases but what will also be uh, involved in sharding is the sharding of smart contracts so it says the network supports transaction sharding for regular payment transactions and for those that invoke smart contracts when it comes to the implementation of the uh, pbft Silica will be one of the very few PBFT-style blockchains. 
and it will become more efficient and gives finality transactions so that confirmations are not required let's say like bitcoin or ethereum when it comes to this new smart co contract language called skiller uh, it's going to eliminate many of the known vulnerabilities in existing smart contracts and make them amendable to formal verification uh, so you know it's like code isn't law sort of thing so they'll be able to be amendable and kind of checked prior to um, uh, releasing onto a mainnet. Um, there'll be, of course, this dual and eco-friendly mining implemented. Now, this will be proof of work and, of course, PBFT. Now, since proof of work period on the Zilliqa will only last one minute every two to three hours, Zilliqa believe that the energy footprint of mining on Zilliqa will be much smaller compared to the blockchains that use proof of work to reach consensus on every single block. With that in mind, there will be a low variance in block rewards as well. So the Zilliqa protocol employs a novel incentive mechanism to reward miners by measuring their contributions in the consensus protocol. This will allow thousands or more miners to be allowed rewards instead of just a single block, therefore resulting in less variance, sorry, lower variance. And then moving on quickly to this bootstrap phase, um, as we discussed a little bit earlier. So we will first launch a network in a bootstrap phase. We expect that it will take some time to gather the computing power required for our blockchain to run faster, more efficiently and more securely. We need to ensure that our network is protected against attacks during this initial launch period when the hash power is relatively low. During the uh, bootstrap phase, miners will be getting mining rewards, but no transactions will be processed. Once a set number of blocks have been mined, uh, then of course those rewards will be processed. And of course, as we said earlier, that will be anticipated for March 2019. Well, that is a quick holistic overview on Zilliqa and of course its recent mainnet launch. As you can hear, I've been slightly under the weather the last few days, so I haven't been able to properly focus on this. I will bring you a much better review on our next section. We will have another review tomorrow. But if you enjoyed this and learned something today, then make sure to give us a like. And if you're new here, then make sure to subscribe to our channel right now.